I am Dr. Zana Moraru and I'm going to present you here a case of a 45 years old male patient which had 20 years ago penetrating keratoplasties in both eyes for corneal dystrophy in which the left eye still looks uh, okay and in the right eye unfortunately he had um, blunt trauma with wood dehiscence and uh, lens expulsion and vitreous loss. We resutured the graft and we sutured a PCIOL in emergency. Uh, but unfortunately the graft uh, failed after 10 years so this is um, the way how it looked uh, now uh, and we decided to perform a um, dissec an ultra thin dissec um, uh, transplant in this uh, case after we measured the diameter of the uh, previous pk uh, because we intend to perform a larger dissec um, uh, transplant we remove the epithelium and we inject air in the arterial chamber in order to perform the decimetorexis with a reverse Sinsky hook under air. If you can notice here in the nasal part of the um, uh, graft host junction, there is a spur um, of, the, of the graft, uh, which um, has a tendency to uh, detach from the from the previous uh, wound, so we need to pay attention to be very careful with um, decimetorexis in that uh, area. Sometimes uh, making the decimetorexis under air can be challenging because the air has the tendency to go out from the arterial chamber, and the surgeon needs to um, reinject air. Fortunately, it was not the case here because the anterior chamber is deep, the eye is quite uh, soft, and we managed to perform quite easily uh, decimetorexis in a single one uh, piece. And we withdraw it from the anterior chamber as a single piece. The decimet looks quite thick and uh, this is due most probably to the fact that the graft failed three years ago but the patient um, uh, postponed the surgery a new graft you can see it very well in only one piece And now we enlarge the um, nasal uh, paracentesis, taking care of that spur of the, um, of the graft, because we want to avoid its uh, puncture or its uh, detachment from the, um, uh, from the host cornea. We prepared the dissect lamella in the OR using an artificial anterior chamber. We marked it with an F letter. And now, we put it on a busing glide very carefully. We aim for a thin lamella, 80 90 microns, which is more difficult to handle in the arterial chamber, but has the advantage of um, faster visual equator recovery for the patient. We fold it very carefully in the busing glide. With gentle manoeuvres, we pull it at the margin of the Poussin glide. And now, due to that spur, uh, which should be avoided, as you see, I go out on the other side uh, with a fine uh, forceps. And I prefer to grasp the lamella outside the eye and then pull it carefully into the anterior chamber while moving the Poussin glide towards the main incision. The infusion is now stopped, but I'm still keeping the maintainer in the anterior chamber, you know, just in case if I'm losing the air from the anterior chamber. And I inject more air under the graft lamella. In cases like this, it is quite difficult to see the margin, the limits of the graft in order to center it because as you see, the host part is quite uh, white, opaque, and the host graft junction as well. 
So I need once or twice to inject air in order to see the limit of the graft and to center it better with uh, gentle massage maneuvers. At the end, I'm uh, leaving the eye a bit uh, under high pressure, uh, about 30, 35 millimeters. And this is how the eye looked the first day, very nice looking cornea with attached lamella. Two thirds of the interior chamber is filled with air. And this is the second post-op day. You notice the smaller air bubble. And on the OCT, you see a thin, nice lamella. But if you follow the, the red arrows, you see the spur of the previous graft uh, that I was talking about. And the dissect lamella covers very nicely, all around 360 degrees, the host and previous PK junction.